Well, hello and welcome to the Nations of Women team on our Facebook group. My name is Shelley Collins. I think you will have remembered me from the previous session that we did with Dr. Tina. This is going to be our second session looking at the book which we've decided to um, engage with called When I Love Myself Enough. Uh, as a reminder, um, I, my role with Nations of Women is um, the head of global diversity, equality and inclusion. And I have the pleasure um, of introducing a new member of our team. Her name is Alison. I'll allow Alison to introduce herself. But we are going to pick up where we left off with Dr. Tina, just to look at the next maybe three or four pages, just a brief exchange of conversations and ideas. Welcome, Alison. Hi there, Shelley. And hello, everybody. I'm Alison Ford. Um, I've come along to help with Nations of Women, basically with the organization of things, just to help Dr. Tina to, with kind of the things that happen in the background, to be there to support. So I'll be kind of kicking around to, to help in that, in that way. Okay. So that's, yeah. Thank you for doing that. It's, um, it requires all of that because the vision is large. Um, our community is growing and all those administrative things in the background um, are required to keep us ticking over. But I know there's a much greater depth and breadth and knowledge base to you rather than this quiet, I'm helping in the background. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I don't know if you've got a chance to, to um, look at the uh, book. Um, uh, yeah. but got my lovely little book. <laughs> you've got your copy. Just yeah. as a quick um, intro, did you get a chance to see the first episode that we put out and what were your thoughts about it? I did, yes. I thought it was lovely. When I when I read the title of the book, When I Loved Myself Enough, I, I didn't really know what that meant until I, I heard the conversations with yourself and realised that it's so important and it's so precious to love yourself and reading through the quotes that the they give you that warm feeling inside and that that feeling and and listening to the first um video and if somebody hasn't seen it i recommend you go back and watch it um it just it just makes you feel warm inside it's a lovely conversation to have to to help people to to see their worth and i think that's really important yeah so um Picking up from where we left off, the next page in this book says, when I love myself enough, I began to know I was in the right place at the right time and I could relax. What would you say that means for you? For me, um, knowing I'm in the right places through life, I've often felt that I wasn't mm. and I've often felt that I didn't fit or mm. that I was trying to be either more than I could be or or be different to who I truly am mm -hmm. so for me I feel that what that means to me when I love myself enough I am at peace with who I am mm. and know that the the skills the qualities the gifts that I have inside me mm -hmm. it's okay to give them because that is what the world needs that is what that's what can benefit that's what can help people so knowing i'm in the right place at the right time just means that i can be me and yeah. know that what i have is enough yeah yeah i think for me that phrase of i began to know i i was in the right place at the right time is often a reflective thing because yeah while you're in the midst of it you often don't feel you're in the right place at the right time it's only when you look back and see how things have um come together opportunities people places things yeah. and then you look back and you go you know what i was in the right place at the right time because then this turned out and it brought me to here and the fact you can relax over that but my lived experiences sometimes where you're in the midst of it it's not relaxing because you always think you're um, missing it <laughs> you're not not uh, did I do the right thing was I in the right place what and yet it's a reflecting thing for me that you look back and you go yeah I was in the right place at the right time because things yeah. turned out this particular way 
Um, yes, and, that, and then that also helps you project it forward as well yes. to build a, an inner strength to know that because that feeling came when you've reflected back, it, you can use it going forward. So if it feels a little bit shaky, it, it just settles you to know actually it's okay. It's okay. It is okay. It is okay. Um, the next page, which is interesting given that when in the UK we have just um, gone into our official one month lockdown again. This one says that when I love myself enough, I felt compelled to slow down, way down. And that has made all the difference. Um, and when I think about the first lockdown we went into, where for many people, for all of us, it was a forced, if you like, slowing down. So for those people who their days were consisting of up early, traveling on trains, getting to the office, suddenly there was no up early getting on trains. Mm -hmm. It was slowing down in terms of pace, in terms of activity, in terms of contact. Um, and for some people that was quite traumatic. Some people hated it. Some people felt very vulnerable in those processes. I must confess, I found it quite an interesting time um, to take time and yeah. have time to do things and have time to, you know, there's that saying, you have time to smell the flowers and see the birds and uh, watch the trees. And I moved halfway through and the place I moved to had this beautiful, just out the back here, um, a, there's like a lake and there are trees oh. around it and open grounds and just to be able to go out and walk around. Mm -hmm. Very seldom seeing people, but it's like, I really got a chance to look at the trees because normally I go past everything. You know, um, I used to drive a lot. I don't drive anymore at the moment, but you, you never got a chance in the car to see anything. Yeah. And now I see so much more than I saw before and appreciate the trees and the leaves and, you know, the birds and the squirrels and, those sorts of things. But yeah, and that has made a difference to my health, to my mental health, I think, and to my well-being. But for you? Very, very similar to yourself, Shelley. Um, it's noticing nature, beauty, the things around us that we, we live a life where we literally fly everywhere. We, we're always jetting off. We always think we have something else to do. And being slowed down and noticing things and noticing the beauty in in everything nature but also conversation when you talk to somebody being able to be engaged in that conversation and give that person you all of you your attention your your whole all your thoughts and being slowed down it it builds a connection with another human being that's far more deeper than a hello, right, doing this, going out. When we live at that fast pace, mm -hmm. we don't fully connect. And when we fully connect, beautiful relationships kind of soar from that because yeah. you can be in a space with a person that is just, it's special. Yes. yes. And when we're, when we're running around and we're fast, yes. we don't notice it. It's happening. Yes. But we don't notice it. So for me, it's the noticing when things have slowed down, we notice the beauty in people, we notice the beauty in nature, we notice just that it's a it's a lovely feeling that can actually fill you up from inside. Mm -hmm. And it does give you an inner strength mm -hmm. and it to, to be able to connect with nature, with people, with with time. Because mm -hmm. we all think that time is such a it, it's such a fast thing that goes over so quickly and it doesn't it, it's a 60 seconds is a long time and it, it's good to kind of remember that and, and just slow down and yeah. the gifts that you get back when you do yeah. just make yourself love yourself without even trying yeah i think even that when you said that for me it's about slowing down even for yourself that you can take time yeah to do things, you know, you can luxuriate in a bath. You can, yeah. you know, just take time to 
read the book you've always wanted to read and not have to rush it or skim it because yes. you're busy you know and you can read it and go away and reflect and come back and or sometimes even apply because there's lots of knowledge we acquire in our heads yeah. but very seldom do we get the chance to take it from our heads to apply it into our lives and yeah. i think that's the other thing i've noticed that you can almost consciously decide to put some application into practice yes. <laughs> and be kind to yourself in doing that yeah yeah and, and it's a beautiful feeling yeah it is it's a it beautiful is. feeling it's a warm feeling and and i think when you get to the point where you do love yourself enough to do that and it does take time and it does take it does take thought you have to consciously think this is what you want it doesn't just happen you've got to consciously think right i will slow down and i will spend this moment loving mm. nature loving myself loving everything and then moments pass yes. they come and they go <laughs> they're not there all the time but the more you notice those moments the more those moments happen without you doing anything it's to true. make them happen it's true um the next one i love it says uh, when i love myself enough i bought a feather bed <laughs> 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 all those treat things um for me it wasn't even a feather bed one of the things that i found myself um taking time to do especially you know you understand when you're working in the corporate world or professional world i used to spend most of my business days in in business clothes yeah suits in whatever and it's that thing of you find yourself wearing things because it fits the client or it fits the venue or it fits the but one of the things i've really enjoyed it's not about but actually just buying clothes that i really like so you know one of the things i've got is a black trilby a little yeah. black trilby hat that i wear and i remember when i saw it and i put it on and the first thought in my head was oh you wouldn't normally wear that but i really loved it yes and so now it's one of the things I wear. I, oh, I think I'd wear most of the times I go out, I would, I would say I wear it. But it's just such fun to wear it. Yeah. And, you know, just choosing things that I want to wear because I really love them. And they, you know, there's almost like a pleasure when you put them on. There's a sense of this is me. This is the me that I really am. So yeah. mine's not a feather bed. Mine, uh, mine's just been recently choosing things I really like to wear that I think represent who I really am. What about you? Yeah, that, I, oh, that, look, to hear that is lovely because that when I listen to you say that, it makes me realize that when you do that, I can hear from you that you truly love the clothes that you've bought that represent you. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is true loving yourself. And, and it doesn't have to be, a feather bed it mm. can be anything that just represents who you truly are because when you live to who you truly are that's when you shine mm. and and this is all about oh, we're here as individuals to shine and and to be who we are because we're all so perfectly unique in our own way to be able to shine our own light and and i think that's really important for people to know that your light is precious to shine and be who you want to be and and reflect who you want to be as well because that is the pure essence of yourself mm -hmm. so for me a <laughs> feather bed is is being myself and accepting the things that I want for me are okay. Mm. So what favorite thing you've ever bought for yourself? Oh, well, it's the bed at the end of it that gets me. <laughs> I read that and I thought I bought a feather bed a few years ago. I I've always wanted a, a solid oak bed. Mm. I love, I love wood. I love everything natural. Um, and I've always wanted a big solid four post. It's not actually a four poster. It doesn't quite go to the ceiling, but it's, it's a lovely big bed. And we moved into a new house and we had to knock two bedrooms into one. 
to get the bed in. But that bed for me, I go to bed every single night and I love my bed. Nobody else sees it. Nobody else, sh- well, apart from my husband, but nobody else, it's, it's for me. It's, it's something that warms my heart every time I get into bed. And sometimes having something around you that actually lifts your spirits and warms your heart, I think that, that for that, when I love myself enough, I bought a feather bed. I bought an oak one. <laughs> and it, and it, it will probably be with me all of my life. I love that bed that much. <laughs> and and it's, it's just about when there is something special that you want or that you feel that would enrich your life, it's sometimes beautiful to have it. And it can be a hat, it can be a bed, it can be a piece of clothing, it can be an ornament, it can be anything. Mm. But it's about recognising that it's special to you Mm. and honoring it and treasuring it and realizing it's worth that that's what that means to me okay um this next one again is relevant i guess in our current situations it says when i love myself enough i came to love being alone surrounded by silence awed by its spell and listening to inner space um, and I think for me, that's one of the probably more significant parts of that first lockdown is learning to love being alone. You know, I am, I'm a busy person, but I actually, people have always said, aren't you, you know, cause I moved, I lived on my own. They said, but aren't you sort of lonely? And I thought, no, I'm not lonely. I actually love my, my, my own company. <laughs> Yeah, I love my own company and I'm not, I'm not like sitting in a corner huddled and, and bored. Yeah. I can fill my day all the time. Yeah. But that thing about being surrounded by silence. So for the first lockdown, um, I literally spent 90 days on my own wow. with hardly ever going out yeah. primarily because my kids spoiled me. They did the shopping, they brought it in, they, they, they delivered everything that I needed. They took care of me in that way. But I think even, I think at one point, you know, even putting my, tra- my trash out there, my son would come around, I'd hand it to him. He'd go put it outside, chat, oh, to, me through, <laughs> chat to me through the window. And, but that thing of, surrounded by silence and one of the things i discovered in the silence were things that i didn't hear before like first thing in the morning hearing the birds chirp um first thing in the morning hearing that or um actually hearing my own thoughts yeah you know almost thinking through a process and pausing and being able to reflect I, I, I called it having conversations with myself. It was like left side of the brain, right side of the brain. Having, you could hear the two-way conversation. Um, but also discovering from me, you know, I, happen, you know I, I am a Christian, but that thing of the spiritual dimension to our lives, you know, that there is a spiritual side to us. You know, my, you know, we've been taught, you know, that we are a spirit. We live in a body. And we have a mind, we have a will, we have emotions. And I think the thing, in going back to the slowing down and being alone, is you discover, and you know, that sounds quite simple, but quite profound, that thing of, I think, I feel. Yeah. And then the question is, who's the I doing the thinking? Yeah. So the fact that I think means that, oh, so I can think differently if I choose to. You know, I... I feel so I have some control over my emotions. I am not my emotions. You know, I have emotions. Yeah. I am not my thoughts. I have thoughts. Um, and I am, I am this spirit being that connects at times to that inner peace, that space where you think, wow, it's almost like you're in touch with the universe, the enormity yeah. of creation, the enormity of life the enormity that we are a small speck in this big universe. That's the thing that I found um, 
quite significant yeah. um, awed by its spell that that silence actually is not something to be afraid of or run from but actually it's almost like a comfort blanket you can you can rest in yes peacefully yeah. you know so that's mine but for you for me the the silence it kind of goes back like again reflecting i was always fearful of the silence of the being on my own of the of that quiet because i've always been quite a busy person and i and i did fear i hated being on my own i didn't like it at all i always mm. like somebody with me mm. and then for me when life slowed down and like exactly what you describe in that space of of wrapped in that comfort blanket of just knowing that even when you are alone you are not alone we are all connected we are all part of once of something that is a lot bigger than just us as an individual person and when you can be quiet and still and in that space that is when you feel that connection and that magic and that overwhelming sense of knowing that you are connected and that you are not alone you are wrapped up by the universe and the things that's going on around us and and love and all those emotions that we create and feel within ourselves yes. when you're silent those emotions are true and 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 i think that's important to 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 remember for people that silence is a beautiful place and it's the place where your body can heal and regenerate and build strength and and it's kind of like it's it, i always one of the things we described it is like a pendulum mm -hmm. so the pendulum is swaying and life is happening and it's rocking you from side to side but when you can bring that pendulum to just here and it's silent mm. and you feel that silence and you are so aware of what's going on around you, mm. that's when that beautiful feeling occurs inside. And yeah. for me, that slowing down and loving being alone and loving being surrounded by silence mm. is that place when you are here and not doing this. And, and it, it's a lovely, beautiful place. I think for some people it can be a place that is fearful yeah uh, and and people try to avoid in fact when you were saying that i i just thought you know we're coming up to remembrance sunday mm -hmm. next sunday and we do that three minutes that silence yeah and it's fascinating to see you know because i've, I've worked a lot with the military you can see in those three minutes or on one minute where people are alone with their thoughts, their reflections, their, and you see it all come up on their faces. You know, I saw it yeah. at the Arboretum when they did the, the VJ, VJ day, um, that it's almost like their life passes before them. That's yeah. how my great uncle used to, to describe it. And so for some people that have never, not that they've never chosen it, but when you have that, time alone imposed yes they've never practiced that or they've never been taught how to be in that place yeah you know i really want to acknowledge for some people being alone is the worst thing in the world for them it, that, it was for me terrifying for them yeah um that what i call the the what's the word unfinished business comes rushing to the surface yeah yeah, yeah. you know so you know, I'm not sitting here saying it's easy, um, but I can only share that there's another side of it, which is, you know, there's a plus and a minus side for some people. And so I want to acknowledge that for some people, being alone is not something they want to do. That silence can be terrifying. That silence can be scary. Yeah. Um, but I think my encouragement would be, in you know, try a little bit of it see you know a little bit of the okay what's it like and then you may have to i don't know put something on put music on do something but there's there's a there's a blessing in learning to live with silence yeah. there is and and i i that is a, a fantastic point because i i was terrified 
I it, I couldn't be in the house without the TV on. Really? Um, I did not like silence and I did not like being on my own. And I st I'm still a very sociable person. I still like to be with people. That's my, that's my choice. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people, that is their choice. Mm -hmm. And it's exactly what you say. It's about finding even a minute to, to learn. And it's, it's something that you can develop and something that you can grow. And if it feels slightly uncomfortable, stay with it, but just for a minute. Mm -hmm. Don't do any more than a minute. Mm -hmm. And after that minute, move on. And what happens is when you start to recognize that feeling, it can build. Yeah. And for some people, it, it won't. And I understand there's so many people out there that that is just not their choice. Yeah. But I think it's really important to know that when you practice something like that and you realize you have a choice here and a choice here, life becomes a little bit more easier when you have something that you can pull on when you need it. Yes. and something you can use when you need it and it's sometimes not what people want all the time yeah but it, it's a really it's a lovely thing to and it's a I can just from experience say to people it wasn't my choice and all mm -hmm. I did was practice a little bit and it and it became a beautiful feeling so I, I do know that it can you can move from one place to another if you decide to make choices yeah so i hope that these reflections have been um of value that you know you've taken things away from this for those of you in, in the facebook group that have listened to this if you have any questions if you have any reflections if it has prompted things that you'd like to share you can go live in our facebook group and share you know things that you've observed or things that you've learned from these things and I would say, especially in the climate where we're going through, you know, as I say, in the UK, we're going back into lockdown in other places, you know, the virus is around and people may, sh other places may shut down again, but perhaps choose this time or allow yourself this time to see the other side, to test out if what we're saying is true. Is there a, a beauty in some silence is there you know how do you love yourself enough are you going to go and buy that special thing or have that thing that makes you feel that you love yourself enough let us know um look forward to the next episode of this um dr tina hopefully will be back in the uk by then um but thank you for being with us yeah just finally i'll just add on the end the thing that is the most useful thing in life is curiosity mm. be curious be curious to know whether what we're saying is something that might be for you it might not be but it might be and this little book if you want a book to read and you want a book to have in your bookcase this is a perfect little book to to just have there so i strongly recommend that for everybody if you're looking for something to do during lockdown. Okay. Have a good day. Take care. Bye.